Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Mega Man 11. In the last part we took out a few more Robot Masters and now we're going to do that again. Mid-game Mega Man games are very samey in that regard, I suppose. It's really what the stages with themselves contain that gets different. With that though, it's time for us to take on the first Robot Master that was revealed for the game as well as the first footage we ever saw of the game in Blockman stage. Wait a second, Deki Kamiya? Blockman stage is odd in that it's the closest thing I can say to being the easy stage. It's a lot more of a calm stage both in musical tone and just platforming to the point where I think they intend this to be the first stage a lot of people would take on. Although there's some particularly platforming later on that can make things a bit more annoying in that regard uh, due to the game's controls being a bit, uh, taking a bit of time to get used to. Well, that said, according to the gallery, Blockman was designed to specialize in building out the outer walls of major projects. He's always secretly dreamed of building a vast structure that recreates the bygone age of pyramids and temples. Ever full of energy, he keeps the robots on his site working til full tilt, the only problem being that he sometimes loses his temper when his laborers can't keep up with him. Blockman often works together with Impact Man, and the two are sometimes seen going to an oil bar to share a drink after a long day of construction. We'll find out more about Impact Man next part. Yeah, next part. Now, these particular rolling enemies, they're called Automawarus or whatever. You can slow down time to take them out, no problem. But if you're going for all the achievements, you're going to want to take them out without slowing down time because I believe there's one just directly tied to that. Despite my love of going for platinum trophies and such in games, because I don't own the PS4 version of this game, I haven't gone for all the achievements yet. And uh, I'm partially glad because I've seen some of them in, uh, oh boy. That and Mighty Number no. 9 will have to wait in that regard. Also, we have a mini boss here. It just moves all over the place and reconstructs itself in various patterns. Power Gear is very useful for that fight, in particular, just so you can speed it up. Now, here's the thing I could have made that fight a lot faster by using the Power Gear Chain Blast. But I didn't because the Power Gear Chain Blast takes up a lot of ammo and I want to conserve that for two, technically three, other instances throughout the stage. I guess three, technically four now that I think about it. As the Chain Blast is probably the most multi-use weapon in the game in terms of just combat usability. Also, I basically brushed it off earlier in the game, but... Having the rush items be mapped to their own button is honestly a really good evolution choice. As it means we have to press L and R left, it means we can just keep ourselves in the flow, it feels really nice. That jump there has caused people some problems. And there is a thing you can technically do to alleviate that, but I'm saving that for later. Now earlier I said this might be the easiest stage for beginners, and the reason I say that is Mega Man 11 isn't an easy game, even on its easier difficulties, I feel, as the platforming later on can get pretty intense, and the boss fights can take a lot of getting used to compared to other Mega Man games, as I feel the animation wind-up for a lot of things ends up messing with people's uh, dodging instincts and how to control themselves around. It can be a surprisingly tough game on the first playthrough, especially uh, the next stage and uh, like two or three other stages on the first playthrough can be complete nightmares if you don't know what the power gears work with, uh, or rather how the power gear interacts with the various special weapons, how the special weapons interact with various portions of the stage. It, it, this isn't an easy Mega Man game on the first playthrough. Honestly, it's probably one of the harder ones. Also, hello again, Totemer. This is the power of Power Gear Chain Blast. It does that to most mini-bosses. Also, here's something new. Uh, hi, Evil Eddie. He only shows up, like, two or three times through the game, period. But if he gets to a certain point on the level design from where he spawns, he jumps off and takes whatever he has with him. Usually, I think it's an extra life... Uh, at least a large life capsule later on in this stage again. And I think there's an occasion where he might take an E-Tank with him, but I actually can't recall. It's odd though that I say that and I can't recall because this game is all one pathway per stage. This doesn't have, compared to other Mega Man games at least, 
uh, separate pathways in certain parts of the level in case you want to take a high path or a low path. Also, yeah, Chain Blast Power Gear is kind of busted. <laughs> Allows you to completely destroy those pieces of level design, but I think that's a good thing because those particular platforming sections are where the controls can really be a bit weird in interaction with the level design. Though I say that, but I'm not exactly sure if Mega Man 11 got any updates to fix bugs or controls after its initial release. I wouldn't be surprised if it did, I just can't actively recall them if they did. I, to this day though, I can't exactly tell what drove me to go for Fuse Man first Speed in my first gear. playthrough rather than Block Man. It might have to do with the fact that I didn't play the demo for the game because I was waiting for the full release because I knew yeah. I was going to like it at the end of the day anyway. Speed gear. And uh, because the Block Man stage was the demo, I don't think there were many, if any, changes to the stage within that. Oh, there you go again. I actually am not sure how they want you to take care of that particular evil lady. I guess maybe the Blazing Torch? Hmm. Either way, it's time for Blockman himself, but he's weak against Chain Blast, so I'm not going to get it out for a moment still. Never thought you'd make it this far. I'll drop you like a ton of bricks! Blockman starts off by running left and right across the stage, but he'll only jump when you initially fire at him, in which case he's going to use his block drop ability to drop four blocks from the Sakai above you onto the ground. However, getting between them is pretty easy. Around the two-thirds or halfway point of his health, he'll use his power gear to hulk out. This thing only has two attacks, I believe. I, there might be a third, I can't remember. A punch that hits the corner or a swipe that hits right near him. However, as you can see, Chain Blast Power Gear takes out really quickly and then takes out another third of his health. At this point, he just does this attack where he fires blocks and three altitudes directly at you, which I have a hard time dodging and a hard time hitting him through for some reason. Using the charge shot is effective here, though, just because it can pierce so many objects, but really, I just want him to die at this point. Come on! No, come on! I always mess up in this phase, I don't know why. Drop like a hot And that's Blockman stage. Nothing too bad, but we do get a pretty good weapon for beating him. We are going to get the Block Dropper. And what this does is what it did during the fight against us. You summon four blocks up in the sky and they fall down in their direct trajectories. It's not the most useful for up close and personal enemies, but if there's a lot of enemies ahead of you in the level design or above you in certain, uh, in the case, should the case be with platforms, this is very useful for getting rid of them. And when you use it with the power gear, you drop a mass of 15 blocks rather than four. It's surprisingly useful for clearing out a lot of high HP enemies. Which, mind you, is just Blockman's ability in general. I believe he also uses that if you're playing on superhero mode against you. Because uh, I, I think I briefly mentioned it, but superhero mode changes very minor things throughout the game. Mainly that the bosses get slightly more aggressive in their patterns, like using their gears more early in the fight using uh being generally faster doing more damage it's an aggression increase essentially also since bolts are so common in this game especially if after you get the mystery chip farming out uh e and w tanks is very easy to do with that though now it's time for my least favorite stage out of the main eight acid man stage now it's my least favorite not because it's outright hard it's more so some physics things later on but the main gimmick is at the acid that's below us that can damage if you fall into it, as well as certain enemies. In fact, I think with these particular spiders, there's a chance you can pike them, fall into to destroy it. But now we have blue acid, which does nothing. Essentially, these sort of inverse turkey based enemies, they fire out a green pellet that if it hits that liquid will slowly change its color. I think it goes from blue to yellow to red, then to green as damage. While it's all the other colors, it does nothing. But if you let them get it to that green state, you're going to take damage pretty quickly if you're not paying attention. Here's the main reason I don't like the stage. It is the closest thing this game has to a true underwater stage. And they're combining that with water currents, which I don't like usually in games. I think water currents are usually really bad for control. But there's also a lot of spikes in these sections, so you need to be very careful with the games relatively precise to get used to controls, otherwise you're going to take a lot of deaths. 
On a first run, this stage is and was a nightmare. Mega Man 11 is definitely one of those games that gets easier the more you play it. Don't get me wrong, as most Mega Man games tend to be, honestly. But there's some obstacles that just are always going to be annoying due to human error and the fact that sometimes our hands don't do what our brains tell them to do. Love the song here, though. Mega Man 11 soundtrack, as I briefly mentioned back in part one, is overall good. I will say, compared to some other Mega Man classic games, not many of the tracks stick in your mind as much after playing the game. Like in this game, the ones that do are Fuse Man's theme, uh, probably Acid Man's theme, honestly, and the stage select theme. Then that's about it. It's a good soundtrack to play too, it's just not one you'll remember much afterwards. Although I gotta say, I really do like the approach the music takes in this game, where it takes more of a pure techno approach to remember the chiptune era while not while being kind of modern with it. Either way, this mini boss will spawn various enemies while swiping its suction cups left and right. But if you just power gear block dropper, it doesn't get much of a chance to do anything. Its most dangerous attack is that it can summon various types of those weird, almost hockey puck looking enemies we saw earlier on the stage. That'll move around in different patterns all over the place. It's a surprisingly hard move to dodge because there's so much to keep your eyes on. This is the point in the stage where things start getting really annoying, though, uh, now that we're past the checkpoint. As now the water currents are actively going to be working against us rather than trying to boost us forward. And that means not only are the jumps a bit more precise, but they're going to just start putting spikes more all over the place underwater. And, uh, yeah, yeah. We also start seeing debris of enemies just fly at us from the opposite side of the screen. That is surprisingly hard for me to dodge for some reason. Either way, Acid Man himself, I'm getting this a bit later, realize, is a cutting-edge scientist robot whose field is advanced chemistry. Ever the perfectionist, he ensures that all chemicals are measured out exactly. Sloppy mixing makes him absolutely furious. He never hesitates to leap into a chemical tank to check the mixtures, in turn making him an excellent swimmer. His reputation has led to the plant employees calling him the Acid Merman behind his back. Okay. This is probably where the jumps get the most annoying in the stage though, as the jump from this rotating platform up to this next one is not precise. You can make it relatively easily, it's just you need to be very careful as misjudging a jump can either make you fall into the spikes below me right now, into the ones to the right, or the ones above me, and I, ugh, that sp spike phobia is very real in games for me nowadays. And then there's this section. You know if Mega Man spike falls? Do them horizontally. Yeah, that, that always makes me nervous. It's not that hard to get around, it's just the anxiety is ridiculous. I honestly think the charge shot piercing through enemies it destroys is one of the best things this game did for the flow, though. As it means, if you know where to place your shots correctly, you can circumvent all danger within a hallway pretty easily. Either way, it's time for Acid Man, who's weak to the block dropper, of course. Welcome to my chemical paradise! Take an acid bath! Acid, acid Man is this game's barrier user, but block dropper immediately destroys it and then he doesn't get to use it for a while. He bounces left and right, generally towards you, firing one to two shots at a time, but when he uses his speed gear, he jumps underwater and swims towards you, generating a giant shockwave of acid behind him you need to jump over. But the moment you jump over it, he jumps out and fires three shots. I recommend doing a slide, then jump over. From there, his pattern repeats. He doesn't get much of a chance to do anything, although I think he does have one other attack he doesn't dick to do. Experiment fail! One of the more annoying stages in the game, but as long as you have the weakness, the boss doesn't get much of a chance to do anything. And for beating him, we get another really good weapon. I believe it's just called the Acid Barrier from the top of my head? You generate a barrier around you as you do with most barrier techniques in the Mega Man series. But this will protect you from projectiles and small enemies, but you can also press the shoot button to fire out a little acid pellet to damage enemies while doing so, making it one of the first, I think, multi-purpose shields in that regard. And when used with the power gear, I believe not only does the pellet get bigger, but the shield generates an outer layer that can be used to destroy enemies outright rather than just protect you from them. It's pretty good. 
But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part four, the final few Robot Masters. See you guys, then.